by popular request, I'm revisiting the power saver plugs again. These are plugs that you're supposed to just plug into a socket. You plug it in, the little green indicator lights, and instantly it cuts your power bill by a huge amount and you're going to save so much money. Lots of adverts saying, oh yes, I bought this and plugged it in, it's great. But one of the reasons I'm visiting this, and I'll open this up now, is to talk out a new twist that advertisers have that is rather sinister. You see, they've started uh, taking video or pictures of, say, a little African inventor girl who's made some invention that shows her in a workshop, or it will show video of some kid in, I think, the one I saw recently, was it was a German video, and they'll put their own text over the top, their own story about how he's MIT's top student and how he's built this amazing device to save you millions of pounds and the oil companies have tried buying him out but he said no I want the people to have it so they can save money and these adverts they're putting the text over the top that the text has nothing to do with what's going on in the video in the background it's just you know they've stolen video and they've just superimposed it but you look in the comments down below and it's full of like particularly on Facebook where they publish these a lot. And the comments are like, OMG, what a wonderful young kid, you know, doing this for us. I was in tears. I bought five. I'm giving them to all my family. And it's all a scam. It's just, this is all fabricated. But anyway, let's take a look at what's inside one of them. Hopefully this is discharged. It should be. A big capacitor. Fundamentally, that's what's in these. And a circuit board. And the circuit board has the pure function of uh, adding a fuse in line and powering an LED because, I mean, obviously you need an LED to actually show it's working. So I'm going to reverse engineer this and then I'm going to tell you how you can really save power because the sort of people who'd be considering buying these or maybe have bought these uh, will probably have had a really high power bill recently and they're wondering ways to, to cut that down. I'll tell you how to do that. But first of all, I'm going to take this circuit board, I'm going to take some pictures of it, and we can explore it and reverse engineer it, and then we shall uh, talk about that, how to save power for real. One moment, please. Okay, let's start with the circuit board. Quite odd, scruffy-looking resistors, but they are actually supposedly fairly high-tolerance resistors. I think they've just used whatever they could get, because let's face it, the people making these are not usually technically adept. It's just achieving what they need with the minimum number of components, which is why this little capacitor here is missing. We've got a fuse. This is good. Uh, what is the rating of this fuse? I should have checked that. I shall check that if I can. It's a 5 amp fuse. So I shall note that down. 5 amp. 5 amp quick blow. It's got an F. That surprised me. I thought they'd use a slow blow because it turns out the capacitor is quite a high value-ish in relative terms. So we've got the fuse. We've got a resistor to discharge capacitor. The capacitor is tucked in the back. We've got an LED, uh, which is out of focus here because it's, it's jacked right up off the circuit board on the end of a stem. And then we've got a very simple capacitive dropper circuit with a 100 nanofarad capacitor and then four discrete diodes for a, a full bit of direct fire, and then a couple of resistors. I'm not sure why this one's here. This one isn't really 100% needed. Don't tell them that. They'll remove that one as well. Uh, I'm just going to check something here. Is it a 400 volt? Yes, it is. 100 nano, 400 volt. Okay. So let's take a look at the... If you want to have a go at reverse engineering this, here is the front of the circuit board. And here is the back, so you can take a wee snapshot and you have a, can have a wee go at uh, reverse engineering that. Everything is flipped on the back of the circuit board so that uh, this capacitor is here and the diodes are here. And I've drawn them on just to make it easier for you. Let's take a look at the schematic. It's not that complex. The mystical bit here is this big capacitor. This big black capacitor here, it's almost amusing that they've chamfered off the edges of this case just so that the domed cover would fit on. It is roughly a 3 microfarad capacitor, and the type of capacitor it is is commonly sold on eBay for what well, I think a printed off a listing. Let me just grab a listing. Here we go. 
This one was uh, £2.66, $3.59, and it's described as electric machine capacitor CB6, CBB61, which is a common type, 3 mg fard, 400 volt motor ceiling fan. But it's commonly called an appliance motor capacitor, and uh, it's used a lot in fans. You'll find it in air conditioners and sears of the one of the windings to give phase shift in the motor. So we've got that big capacitor. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a big red circle around it because that's the most, that's the bit that does, that's the bit that really does anything in here. It's a big capacitor. And we'll put that around the fuse, that's important, and this discharge resistor. They're all important. The rest of this stuff, you know, it doesn't matter if it lights up or not. It's going to do what it does. So we've got this 270k resistor which is designed to discharge the capacitor. If you unplugged it and that wasn't there, there's a chance that it, you'd get a, quite a strong shock off the pins. And sometimes with uh, faulty ones of these, I've had one in the past that the resistor was not connected properly, you can get a shock off the pins. Another thing worth noting here is these pins are shorter than the standard. They're supposed to be for a UK plug, but they still make connection. Then we got the, so that's the main circuit, right? We've got the fuse, we've got the big capacitor, and the 270k discharge resistor for safety. Then we've got a 100 nanofarad capacitor, the bridge rectifier, and then the current's going through the LED to make it light. And it's interesting to note that they do have positions for three LEDs in this circuit board. Now I notice that some units do actually have a multiple of LEDs, but they've just got them in parallel. Um, they could have actually wired them in series for extra efficiency, but it's just different models. Maybe more LEDs equal more power. I'm not sure. That seems to be how these people work. It works better if it's got more lights. They should flash as well. That'd be quite good. Just blink every so often to show it's saving money. But there's this 5.1k resistor here, which if they'd had the original electrolytic capacitor in there, which uh, is actually, there's a place for it on the circuit board, right here underneath that uh, red capacitor uh, actually let's let me show you the bigger picture let me show you the bigger picture hvac overtime comes to mind here hvacr videos uh, that capacitor there would actually provide a bit of smoothing but to be honest it's not really needed the led is technically speaking just dipping out 100 or 120 times a second but it's not really visible but if they'd put that capacitor in this resistor would have made sure the light went out decisively instead of just fading away as they sometimes do intelligent energy saver yes indeed so what will this do it will not save you power it will not cut down your electricity bill what it will do is that if your mains waveform, and you see this uh, exaggerated drawings on our site, it shows spikes and glitches all over the waveform. It's not quite as bad as that usually, but having a big capacitor across the main supply is like a filter, and it will actually have some effect there, but that's about all it will do. Um, usually your some home appliances have capacitors in them for that filtering. The downside of this is that it will also pass, if you were to plug this in and your electricity meter was programmed, to measure apparent power. This thing would potentially, let me, can I measure this? Can I measure how much current this is gonna draw? I'm gonna to have to plug this in with the case open. Ooh, that's dangerous. And we'll plug it in and uh, we'll see what the apparent current is 253 milliamps. So the apparent power of this thing Right now, that's quite high, times 240 is the equivalent of 60 watts. Ooh, that's quite a high apparent power. That's ridiculous. Uh, that means that if, you've, if you're if you a modern tariff, if you've got a smart meter, um, and you, uh, did I catch that on video? Let me just do that again because sometimes I go off video for that. Let's plug this back in and show you it so you, so you can see the real thing. I'll show you what I did there. Capacitors pass current, but they don't heat up. They actually cause a phase shift, but it causes an apparent current. So if I plug this into this unit and I tilt this back so you can see it this time instead of just doing it off shot and I step through, it says there's no, no real power being drawn. 246 volts is the supply voltage, but it's passing 253 milliamps. 253 milliamps, that's 0 0.253 times the 246 volts I got at the moment is 62 watts. That's the what it 
a, a meter measuring apparent power would actually measure that. It would bill you for that. It would cost you £60 a year to have that plugged in. Wow, that's pretty grim. Um, but in reality, most meters at this point in time just measure real power, so it's not actually going to bill you for that. So how can you save power? Well, the biggest loads in your house are heating. And if you've suddenly had a massive increase in your electricity bill, really like massively huge increase, and you don't know what it is, then look for things in your house. It could be that, you know, something simple, turning the thermostat up just a few degrees will cause the heating to run a lot longer. People leaving doors open, the heat will get out and the heating equipment will come on and uh, or vice versa, the cooling equipment in hot climates. It will run longer and that has a huge impact on your bill. It may be that you stuck a heater in a garage uh, or left a heater on somewhere just because you thought that would be a good idea. Or maybe one of your outside, the old-fashioned 500-watt halogen floodlights, they used to jam on, and they will cost, uh, effectively, they would add over £100 each to your bill every quarter if you the 500-watt halogen uh, floodlight jammed on. Another thing to look for, your hot water tank, if it's got an immersion heater, is it boiling? Is the water absolutely coming out scalding hot? The thermostats in those fail. If you look at the tanks, in the UK, we've got big domed tanks like that. And there's a sort of junction box on the side, and it's got a heating element that goes into it, um, and also a thermostat. If the thermostat fails, it will keep heating it up, and because these are often vented outside, above the roof, through a, a sort of pipe above the sort of water level of the uh, tank, it will be blowing boiling water outside. It will literally be blowing boiling water down the drain. It will cost you... Three kilowatts running all the time, 24-7 would cost you £3,000 a year. So that's something to look for. Other things to do, if you've nothing really suspicious like this, could somebody, if you live in a block of flats, could someone else be connected onto your supply? The way to find that out is to turn off all the loads in your house and watch your electricity meter. And if it's, if it's rotating or blinking its wee light to show power consumption, there could be somebody that the wiring has got mixed up somewhere or somebody's tapped into your power. Other things to do if all these draw blank is to say, are you living in a very hot house? If you are, or if you're in a cold climate and you've turned the heating way up because you get cold easily, wear warm clothing and turn the heating down. If you turn it down from say 20 degrees Celsius, 60 or more degrees Fahrenheit, down to something like 50 degrees Fahrenheit or maybe 15, 16, 17 degrees Celsius, that will make an absolutely massive difference to your electricity bill because the hotter your house is, the faster the heat's going to escape. The same applies in hot climates to air conditioning equipment. Um, other than that, really look for new equipment you've added that may actually be drawing a lot of power. Some computers draw a lot of power. Some dehumidifiers actually draw a lot of power, particularly if they end up running all the time. Uh, faulty appliances that just run all the time is a significant issue. But uh, this won't fix them. However, if you want to buy one of these for the novelty, and they do have that effect of at least having a filtering effect on your power, then don't go via these big online sellers because they're probably drop shipping them from Chinese sellers. Chinese sellers like these, who this is, e if I searched on eBay for power saver, that's all I searched for. Available, make sure you get the correct plug type. But they typically cost in the UK £4.26, £4.80. You know, they're less than £5. In America, they should be less than $8 or something like that. So you can buy one. I mean, it's a nice enough case, apart from the short pins. It would be a good project case to build something into like, a, like an ionizer, perhaps. But um, it's cheaper, ultimately, to get the case and the capacitor if you wanted one of these as a as a high-power filter. But other than that, they don't save power, but what I've told you can. So uh, if you are concerned about power usage, don't waste your money on one of these. Just ignore the adverts. They're all lies. Uh, just look around and see if you can save power in other ways, because that's absolutely the best way to do it.